Who here likes to chop onions? Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I am Brian. Do you like my new shades? I mean, you can't <laughs> see out of them, but sure. Um, hold on. Yes. All right, people. It is time for a new series here on Crocs in the Kitchen. Yes, this one is not for the professionals out there. This is for the people who are just starting out. Yes, it is the plant-based basics series. So we're gonna take you through a few things. We'll just keep doing this every, you know, maybe once a month, twice a month, whatever, until we feel like we've accomplished all the things, which I think will never happen because there are a lot of basic things that you can learn in a kitchen, especially when it comes to eating a plant-based diet. But one of the ones that we, we would get asked quite often, and uh, we were kind of surprised at this was, how do you chop an onion? Yes, we are going to show you today how to chop an onion using a knife and also using my favorite little chopper I've got here. And we're going to share a few tips and tricks with you along the way. So if there's something that you want to see in this plant-based basics series, nothing is too basic. Trust me, like nothing is too simple or too basic or stupid to request. Comment below and let us know what you'd like to see, but let's get to chopping. Okay, so to properly chop an onion, you will need three things. One, a thing to chop on. Two, a thing to chop with. And three, a thing to chop. Now, I cannot reiterate this more. Having a sharp knife is very important. It is actually a lot safer to have a very sharp knife than it is to have a dull knife because it requires less force to cut through things. It's just all around like a lot better. Yeah, you may cut yourself, you know, but it'll also be a clean cut too. It won't be like a jagged cut. If you have a rough knife, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. Also, uh, gripping a knife is very important too. So what you really want to do is grip with this finger and this finger right there. Well, your thumb, it's thumbs, not actually a finger. And then wrap around with those three fingers like that. I actually hold it like it's a drumstick because that I'm a drummer. And so that's what I do. Never hold it like that and never just hold it like a club. You know, whenever, like, just hold it like that. You grip the front there, wrap those three fingers around, and then you've got really precise control over everything that you wanna actually use it for. Uh, there are three ways of chopping an onion, and uh, they all require the same basic first steps, though, and that is to remove the top and cut through the middle, through the root. Actually, if you do it like that, it's a lot easier. From there, remove the outer peel. The next step is fairly easy. You just want to have it on a flat side and then very carefully slice down through it like so. But be careful not to go all the way through to the root end. Keep in mind, I'm actually not that great at this. My knife skills are pretty okay. So now that it's been chopped through like that, you can see it's very simple. So the two methods that I know of are to uh, do a cross cut across this way or to do a couple of cross cuts that way. But honestly, if you're just doing a rough cut anyway, like if this is for a soup or something like that, it doesn't really matter and you can literally just chop it like that. So that's the first method that I'm going to show you. You just chop it down that way and then you just sort of dice it down after that. Once again, keep in mind, I'm not actually that good at this. So it's a fairly good representation for your average home cook. Now, the other thing you can do though, is actually, you don't have to get rid of it this either. You can actually chop all that. And bing, bang, boom. You've used pretty much the entire thing except for that little knob right there. And that's it. It's a rough cut, as you can see. It's got a couple of bigger pieces there, yes, but you know, it is what it is. But uh, for the most part, this is perfectly fine if you're just trying to like throw this into uh, some chili or something like that, if you don't mind having some good chunky pieces of onion in there. All right, so the next method is to do the exact same thing. You just start with chopping down 
on the sides there. Just try to be consistent. Once again, don't go through the root end. Now, I'm gonna do a couple of uh, horizontal slices. Be very, very careful while doing this. I've had the knife slip and I totally cut my hand doing this. So be very, very careful. All right, so once you've got that, you got two cuts that way, one cut going that way. It also kind of depends on the size of your onion uh, because if you've got a bigger onion, you may have to do more cuts, but you just want to try and make them as evenly spaced throughout the entire thing as possible. Then from there, simple, just go ahead and dice. Okay, so the final technique requires the exact same steps as before, which is to take off the top of the onion, split it down the middle, and remove the papery stuff. Now, before I went like this, right? And then I went like that, and then I chopped it, right? So this one is called like the fan method. And really what it is is you try to uh, angle your slices inwards to the core so you get even strokes uh, that way. Now, it's a little bit more difficult for me to show you that process, but really what you just try and do is you just go into the middle there. Once again, trying not to cut through the end of it. And then just try and angle them a little bit better than I'm doing. And uh, yeah, then let me show you. So you can see they're all kind of like fanned out like that. And then from there, straightforward as before, you just slice them down the sides. And there you go. So as you can see, that wasn't that difficult at all. It was fairly straightforward, pretty easy to do. Just be careful. Once again, sharp knives, you can cut yourself. Uh, but I did wanna leave you with one final tip as well when it comes to knife maintenance. One, never wash them in the dishwasher. Uh, the dishwashing detergent can really, really quickly dull your knife. Uh, also, uh, just wash it with soap and water afterwards. You, some, most of the time, I don't even use soap. I'll just use, rinse it off and then wipe it off with a cloth. And uh, always uh, hone your blade if you ever think that it's even getting remotely dull. And of course, uh, we probably will do a video eventually on how to actually do real proper knife maintenance and care. But that's it. So I guess it's uh, on to you now. All right, so you guys know when I chop things, I like to rely on my handy dandy chopper. Um, so this is my favorite one to use right now. This one actually had a recall. So if you guys have purchased a similar one to this, definitely check out the link in the blog post below to see if yours has been recalled. There was a recall because of the little latch here. Um, so if your latch doesn't look exactly like this one, it's a little bit smaller or it has broken off, definitely check that out and get a replacement. This is my replacement. I don't believe you can actually order this one right now, um, but I will link to some similar ones in the blog post. And I suggest reading the reviews because they definitely vary in, you know, their ability to chop and all kinds of different stuff. So for this one, it has several different blade types. I actually have four different ones. You can see I haven't even used these two. I don't even know exactly what the heck that one does. Uh, comment below if you know what, I guess that one will just make a di giant square, I don't know. But my favorite ones to use are either the small dice or the large dice. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually swap out and use the small dice, which is my favorite to do for red onions because I like to have them in salads. So you just basically would unlock, oh wait, I just locked it. <laughs> You would unlock it. Be very careful with these things because these blades are very sharp. You don't want to touch them or grab them or pick them up like that. Um, and then you just lock it back into place and everything does come apart and it can go in the dishwasher. So that is really handy. Um, but this is my favorite thing to use. Now I'm going to show you my technique that I use for chopping in these things because there is a little bit of a technique. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. Pete, get out of the way. 
On some of these choppers, this little opening is actually pretty small. So you, you know, you might not be able to fit your entire onion through once you, if you just slice it up and, and all that kind of stuff. So there is kind of a little trick to how to dice these up. The first method you could do is pick small onions that obviously will go through. And the, my favorite way to chop the onion is, you know, of course, grab your fancy knife that you borrowed from Brian um, and go ahead and chop the end off. So you're gonna chop one of the ends off and then very carefully, and then you're gonna chop the other end off. So you have both ends off. This is my favorite way to do it. And then I very carefully, again, take this knife and just ever so slightly, because this blade is so sharp, this probably is dangerous anyway. Um, Brian, is this dangerous? <laughs> You just want to kind of chop into it. And what that will allow you to do is very easily peel off this outer edge and it won't like, you know, you won't have any problems with it coming off. Um, so we're just going to do that and get it all nice and get all this weird stuff off and all that. So there you go. You have your onion ready to go. All right. So now that you have your onion like this, you're not just going to throw it in the chopper like that. I'm going to go ahead and chop it into kind of like rings basically. And you don't have to be exact on this. Again, be careful, hold your knife properly. I like to rotate it once I get close to the end. I like to, you know, not have my fingers in the way if possible so that I can't slice myself. I'm not a great chopper, I'm bad with knives. I'm just showing you my technique and hopefully you can do a little better than me. So these will go in very nicely into the chopper. So let me show you, see, they fit very perfectly into there. And then you literally just go like this, hold that down, press in. Voila, your onion has been chopped. Now we're gonna do another one and another one. I do find it works best if you put them down so that the, 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 uh, the smaller side is on the top and the last one. So you can see those all very easily fit into my little chopper. Now you may be saying, hey Jessica, what happens if you have an onion that's a little bit larger and will not fit into it? How do you chop it for that? Well, you could do something like this. So this one's already been cut in half. Um, and you could, like, if you have the halves, you can put the halves in there as well. So you could just simply dice the large onion in half and then put these halves in there. And you can see these ones came out just fine. I find sometimes that that happens and then they all break apart and then you're like, ah! <laughs> Obviously, if you're a little bit careful, more careful than me, you wouldn't have that happen. But um, if they stay together, then great, then good on you. A lot of times I notice they fall apart. Brian has the same frustration happen to him. And of course, you can just pick up the pieces and put them in. Of course, being careful not to touch the blades as you're putting them down. And you can just, you know, get them all in there, all that kind of stuff. All right, so what I prefer to do if I have a larger onion instead of slicing it in half is to actually use the ring method that I did before. So just slice it roughly into rings, being careful not to chop yourself in the process. And then, now, if you have one that is too big to go into the chopper, what I like to do so this one you can see is a little bit too big. So if I try to smoosh that down, that ain't gonna be pretty. What I like to do is just remove enough of the outer rings, so probably like two rings for this one because it's not too big, and then put the rest in there and set the rings aside. So some of the ends might be smaller, so they might go through perfectly, but then you might get another larger one like this. Again, just remove a couple of the rings so that it's small enough to fit in there. Now, all you have left are these little rings and you can just simply chop them in half usually and then they're small enough to go in. You might have to chop them up a little bit further if you want, but instead of having a bunch of rings that are just randomly disheveled across your thing, I find that method to be a lot more simple. All right, so let's show you the final, final product. You can take this off and look at all these amazing chopped onions that are super even and ready to go for your salad. So there you have it. How to chop onions in several ways using knives and choppers and all kinds of things. Another little tip I wanted to give you is for the storage of the onions. You may notice when you chop onions and store them in your fridge, all of a sudden your entire fridge smells like onion. My little trick is to put the onions into a Pyrex glass container, seal the lid, and then take the entire container and put it into a gallon Ziploc bag. Now you can reuse these Ziploc bags over and over. They don't really get dirty, obviously, but if you seal it up really nicely, I don't, I find that 
that it keeps all the odor inside and your fridge does not smell like onions. Yep, which exactly happened one time when I chopped an onion at <laughs> night and then I put it into the refrigerator. And then Jessica woke up the next morning and she was like, why, why does a fridge smell like iron? <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly, that was a perfect imitation of Jessica in the morning yelling uh -huh. at me. So, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed that one. Uh, it was, it was actually a lot of fun to record, you know, because yeah. you get to do all the little choppity choppities and stuff. And here's the thing, you guys, we're not experts at any of these little, these are just the tricks and tips that we've learned. So if you guys have any other tips or tricks, obviously feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, if you guys want to see something else, like I said, just let us know what other videos you want us to make in this series, this plant-based basics series. Um, we are super excited for this one because I think it'll just be nice for people who are new to this way of eating and maybe too afraid to ask some of the basic questions. So other than that, I think that's all we got. Yes. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and click the bell that is right next to that button and you will get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, you can find us on social media, primarily Instagram and Facebook. Uh, also like and share the video. It really does help the channel grow and it helps get it out into more people and uh, hopefully we can grow the channel and uh, continue doing this well, well, well into the future. But I think that's all I got. That's definitely all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.